Parallel universes have been the question that we have been trying to answer for years. Time travelers, glitches, Mandela effect, all possible answers to this fantastical theory. Noah, the alleged time traveler from 2030. Back in 2018, this guy had taken the world by storm. Although supposedly being from 2030, he's traveled all across the spectrum to the years 2060, 1999, and the year 2120, to which he also supposedly had video proof of what it would all look like. He explains that the clip he took was from Las Vegas and showcases flying cars to tall futuristic looking buildings and a very peculiar looking orange sky. Noah explained, the red clouds are global warming. You can see it's everywhere. I can remember it being incredibly hot. I'm pretty sure they are working on it in the future. He also stated that some really crazy predictions for the future, some key ones being Martin Luther King Jr's granddaughter will become president. Scientists live on Mars, Instagram becoming a thing of the past, cures for illnesses, and finally being able to talk to aliens. Noah also disclosed taking anti-aging pills that keep him the same age throughout his journeys, since he claims that time traveling makes you gain years. Of course, no one really believed any of this, especially with the video, to most people looking like a cheap 3D rendering. One commenter even pointed out that he's using a phone from our time to show this, rather than some crazy futuristic one. Despite all this though, he took a lie detector test that really put him on the radar, and he passed it with flying colors. What he was saying came out truthfully. But then again, this wasn't done by professionals or with professional equipment, so who's to say if it means it's actually true? The deja vu and parallel universe theory. I had speculated this theory for a few years now, and I'm really happy that other people are discussing it. Majority of us know what deja vu is, a moment in our lives where we get this strange feeling that we've done something like this before. It's French for already seen, and there are some scientific theories for why this happens, such as temporal overlap. This is when the long-term and short-term memories blur together for a moment, or subconscious familiarity, where your new surroundings have some similarities to an old one. The last being neural delays that create a false feeling that some event has occurred. But I like parallel universes theory better. To explain my favorite version of the theory, a deja vu is when your other self in a different universe and you in this universe accidentally overlap the same timelines. The two of you are living very different experiences, but for some reason we have one, or a few if you're like me, moments in time where the two timelines collide at the exact perfect moment. Our lives perfectly linked up together based on whatever choices we made to get us in that exact same moment of time. I would also love to hear your theories about this down in the comments below. This is a great way to transition into the mirror image universe theory. It could also link to the deja vu theory, but this theory specifically focuses on the moments before the Big Bang, and scientists coming up with a hypothesis that there was a universe completely mirror image to our version today. However, the only difference is that time is moving backwards in that universe. I'm not going to try and get deep with it, but the basic understanding of this theory is that the Big Bang is the center point of time, and because scientists believe in heavy symmetry within the universe, when it happened, it also created a negative version of time of our universe alongside ours. So when you think of cracking an egg, what would happen instead in the other universe is that it would start out from the yolk on the ground and turn back into the egg. This theory started back in 2015, when some scientists were up in Antarctica researching high energy particles. What we did know before is that there are high energy particles coming towards Earth, which from my understanding is because our universe is constantly expanding outward. However, they discovered high energy particles going away from our Earth in the opposite direction, as if they were going back in time. There was something pulling or stretching these particles the opposite way, as if the universe is expanding in another direction simultaneously. Let's take a brain breather with some Mandela effects. This one, specifically from Toy Story, is new to me. Do you remember Woody's catchphrase being, there's a snake in my boot? Because that's how I remember it, and the majority of people who grew up with it. But we were wrong, because the actual phrase of it goes, there's a snake in my boots. 
It was plural and it was never singular. But of course, the internet didn't agree with this, with the biggest reason being that it grammatically doesn't make sense. The proper sentence should be, there are snakes in my boots. And it also doesn't help with the fact that the Woody toys that came out all say, there's a there's snake a in, my in my boot. There is no plural for those. So what gives? There was only one Reddit comment claiming that Pixar confirmed it's always been boot and not boots. But I haven't been able to find an article on that. How do you guys remember it? Tell me down in the comments below. Imagine finding a watch while you're exploring a tomb. Of course, watches have been around for quite a while at this point, but what makes the famous tiny Swiss watch so special? In 2008, archaeologists discovered a remarkable piece of metal that was the size of a ring, bearing the face of a watch that was marked specifically at 1006. On the back was the word Swiss engraved. This was found in a tomb that had been sealed away for more than 400 years, and yet this watch watch was only 100 years old. How is that possible? Especially when Switzerland wasn't an established country at the time. The tomb was speculated to have been created during the Ming Dynasty that ruled from 1368 to 1644, and watches were apparently not a thing in that area at the time. My question however though is, how sure are we that it was sealed for that long? What are the odds that someone had gone in there prior to the archaeologist, but just decided on not taking or touching anything? It's possible, but then why did they leave the watch ring. People obviously speculate that there were maybe time travelers that left it as a clue for their existence, since many of those already exist across the internet. People love to believe we live in a simulation, with major ones being caught when watching sports. This specific video uploaded by Highlight Heaven on YouTube arranged a variety of clips from football that feed into the simulation theory, and there were a few that stuck out to me. The first two clips involve some very synchronized movement of football players getting up. Simultaneously, at the exact same time, their movements are mirrored perfectly, down to the hand placements, to the tempo, you name it. The biggest one that people have their eyes on is when one of the football players does this really weird, almost floating maneuver to get up. They barely use their hands as they hoist themselves from off the ground, as if all their power is coming from the balls of their feet. Sure, they have the momentum of pushing upward, but after that it looks like it's all in the foot power. But I do have a theory for these weird movements, to which I feel many of you have figured out by now. Football players are constantly practicing and drilling in certain movements, right? They've also probably been practicing the quickest and most efficient way of getting up when they get tackled, with one of these ways being the weird floating technique. I'm not a football player, but I've taken movement classes where we are drilled in certain ways of getting up properly and quickly. It's definitely a neat trick that these guys do here, and I can see how it would become an optical illusion at certain angles. The man from Torrid. I'm not sure how legit this story is, but still interesting nonetheless. On one sunny day somewhere in July in 1954, an ordinary looking man arrived at Haneda Airport in Tokyo. There was nothing strange about the way he was dressed, sporting a nice suit and tie with a groomed beard. He was fairly familiar with Japanese, so no red flags thus far. It wasn't until officials noticed on his passport that he was coming from a country called Torrid. There is no such thing as Torrid, that we're all aware of, and when this man was confronted by police as a possible fraud or threat, he got extremely frustrated and tried to explain that it is in fact real and has been around for 1,000 years. So they got him to try and explain where on the map it was located, and apparently it was supposed to be between Spain and France, but he had no idea why it wasn't showing up on our maps, as he kept repeating he's made multiple trips to Japan before. He even had papers to support his case. However, before they could take a look at them, the man suddenly disappeared from his hotel room, one that was located on the seventh floor with no balcony. The police tried to keep him there while they figured things out, so they had no clue where he went. A lot of people use this theory to support the claims of parallel universes, but I don't know. It sounds a little too good of a story to be true. Do you have your own encounters with parallel universes? I want to know. In the meantime, I will see you all in the next video. Stay creepy out there.